This reason right here is why NBA fans always screw up traveling. We're going to look at it, look at the rules, and show you how not to travel. Let's check it out. You got to be possessed with the dream. The dream. Traveling in the NBA can seem like a common occurrence. Players are always walking up the floor with the basketball in their hands and it's rarely called. Star players like LeBron James and James Harden are often seen taking way too many steps and getting away with it. We're going to talk about traveling today and what's legal, what's not legal, and the best way you can distinguish between the two. First, before we even get started, let's take a look at the NBA rulebook and see what they're determining as traveling and not traveling. And then we'll look at some college clips and see how players are doing it correctly. And then let's look at the NBA clips and see how players aren't doing it correctly. The first thing that you should know about traveling is that when the ball is not on the ground and it's in your hands, you may still pivot using one foot as the pivot foot. And we're going to see a clip here in a few seconds of how a player does it correctly. Now, if that player has a pivot foot, he's not able to move it from the original position that it is in. And that's key to understand traveling because if you move that pivot foot, it immediately becomes traveling. So let's first start with what is legal. And if we notice on this play here between Minnesota and Michigan State, the ball is thrown into the low post. The player will establish his left foot as his pivot foot. He moves around once or twice, which is fine because that left foot doesn't move, reestablishes a dribble again, and then goes up and makes a basket. And we're going to look at this play again in slow motion. If you see he establishes that left foot, it moves just a little bit, maybe an inch or two, but it's not enough to deem it traveling. So the ref lets it go, and he's able to score a successful basket. This basket is counted good. And now the next rule that we're going to look at is skipping down to the C section and starting a dribble after one receiving the ball while standing still or coming to a legal stop the ball must be out of the player's hands before the pivot foot is raised off of the floor and what we're going to see here is actually from the same michigan state and minnesota game the player is going to drive into the post he's going to pivot off his back foot turn back around and then make a jump shot And again, we're going to slow it down as he's starting to drive to. Gets to the foul line. One, two, gets up, shoots the ball off. It is not a traveling violation because he gets it off after the second step is taken. The next three options that we're going to look at is option F, G, and H. And what option F and G are saying that a player may not throw the ball to themselves in the air without it touching the backboard the basket ring or another player so for instance if they're doing an alley-oop you can't just throw it in the air to yourself you must put it off the backboard the rim or some other player in the game what we're going to look at next through video is h and upon ending his dribble or gaining control of the ball a player must not touch the floor consecutively with the same foot and what we're going to see here is a clip and we're going to see the player pivot and then go up off of his other foot and then jump off of both feet. This is legal because he's not hopping off the same foot. So, for instance, if he was running and then he did double hop off his right foot, similar like he's playing hopscotch, this would be illegal and it would be a travel violation. But because he does pivot, spin, and then jump right off of his other foot, it is legal and it is not a traveling violation. Now we're going to get into traveling violations in the NBA and what is actually traveling and what sometimes is way too obvious to be traveling and it's called and sometimes it's not called. So the examples we're going to look at are current players, star players that do travel from time to time. And our first example is Kemba Walker and we're going to see straight off the inbound here. He's going to catch the ball and take way too many steps before actually putting the ball on the floor, which... I believe this doesn't get called in the game just because it's Kemba Walker and it's an inbound and people don't really care about it, so it's not often called, which is surprising. The next clip is Dirk Nowinski, who's now retired, but the graphic on the screen actually has a hopscotch chalk drawing on the ground here, and you can see his pivot foot is just walking and walking, and it's pretty crazy it's not called here. Again, because this is Dirk Nowinski, it's probably not going to get called, but his pivot foot travels at least three or four different times before he reestablishes it pivots back to square up and then makes a basketball move towards the baseline.
The next clip we have is of Kemba Walker. Again, in this one, we can see why it's not called. However, it should have been called. So Kemba's driving to the hoop, and they think that, I believe it's Jared Sullinger, or number seven from the Celtics, hits the ball, which makes it come loose. But he actually has possession of the ball most of the time and then walks one, two before he lays it up. So this should have been called the travel. It was never called the travel, and they end up giving him the two points. We're taking it back to 2008 in this clip, and this is Boston versus L.A., and L.A. starting to catch up to Boston in the fourth quarter here. And you can see the Boston they bench explode and call travel, but it's never called here. We see it in slow motion when he picks up his dribble, one, two, three, three and he's up you can only take two steps so that should have automatically been called the travel i think in the situation of the game they let it go which you hate to see happen but it happened here in the boston versus la lakers game the final clip that we have here is just re-establishing what we've been talking about all along with the plant foot not being able to move and here we're going to see his plant foot or his pivot foot and it's just inching back and inching back further and further and for some reason the referee is standing right in front of him doesn't call it once that pivot foot is set in the ground it cannot move and it needs to be staying there firm until the ball is either reestablished back on the ground or it's passed to another player or if the ball is of course shot in the air so these rules will differ in college it is a much cleaner game in a sense of traveling being called and the nba is a little bit more lenient so what are your thoughts on traveling? Let us know in the comment section below if we miss anything here or how you interpret traveling. Let us know in the comment section below. We'd love to open up the discussion to traveling and why it's not called as much in the NBA as it is in the college game. So make sure you subscribe and we'll see you guys next time.